Hello and welcome back to 3D Anatomy session. My name is Dr. Paresh Naik. I'm an ENT surgeon specializing in rhinology skull base and head and neck. So, what are we doing today? Well, someone in the comment section had asked me regarding relationship of infratemporal fossa to inferior orbital fissure. We are going to have a look at that today. The inferior orbital fissure is a very fascinating topic. The nose forms a common corridor to many areas, one of them being eye. So let's explore in details. This intriguing and anatomical structure plays a crucial role in our vision and facial sensation. We are talking about this area. As clearly understood, this is the orbit. So what exactly is the inferior orbital fissure? Well, it's a small opening at the inferior part of the orbit. The opening serves as a pathway for several vital structures, as you can see on the small box where I have put an image of inferior orbital fissure and its contents. This inferior orbital fissure can be a bit tricky to locate but it is important to understand its boundaries. So just for basic sake, let's understand that inferior orbital fissure is inferior in the orbit, that is at the floor of the orbit. We can see the greater wing of sphenoid over here. Let's have a look on the left side, okay? So this fissure, they form the door or the entry to other structures. Can you see this bluish demarcation? That's your infraorbital fossa, ITF. These elongated clefts, these are the fissures. This is the superior orbital fissure and that's the inferior. Quite obvious, this is inferior on the in the orbit, that's why it's called as inferior. And this is going upwards, that's superior. So why is this important or why are we looking at this? Well, recently we have been understanding the new concept of transorbital surgery. What we do is if there is an lesion, especially in the ITF or any area which is easily accessible via the orbit, along with ophthalmology and neurosurgeons, a team effort can be made to have an access to this uh, lesion. So this is the eye. And this is the safer bone. This is your triangle of safety. I have made a video on this, on the cadaver dissection. You can have a look. It's given in the description. So the moment we drill this, we get a good access to the ITF. So if you want to look at the contents of this, it's mainly the V2 branch. That is the maxillary no. As you can see, this V2 branch comes out of the infraorbital fissure. That's your supraorbital nerve and that's the supratrochlear nerve. So whenever we are doing any fenestration surgeries to the frontal sinus, we need to be careful about this. We'll have one more session about the anatomy of the nerves. So the whole purpose of understanding this 3D anatomy is understanding that we can approach the ITF via transorbital approach. If we drill inferior lateral and slightly go posterior to the inferior orbital fissure, we land up in the infratemporal fossa, that is the ITF. You see, this area if you want to have an access from an orbit, you can have it. I'll show you again. Understand this anatomy. You know, our brain is like a virtual reality. You can imprint these images in your brain and whenever you're operating, you can bring it forward like a live image guidance. 
a virtual reality. So you can you can easily approach the infratemporal fossa via the orbit. Hope you have enjoyed this session. Thank you. We will discuss regarding nerves and the branches of the trigeminal in our next session.